So final preparations to chapter, now chapter four. Uh, what we're going to do in here is to create a ordin an ordinary user to compile the first part of the uh, LFS system, the temporary LFS system. And this is just safety really to help prevent the uh, base system being affected by anything that, that is done. So the first thing we're going to do is to create some directories which you'll recognize are those for an ordinary Linux system. But bearing in mind, this is just a temporary uh, system that we're building here at the moment. So as, root, as we've done so far, if things as root, we're going to create these directories. And you can see because the verbose is on, it lists those directories that have just been created. Then, now this is actually one command, so I'm going to copy it all in one go. Some more directories are going to, uh, are these directories? No, these are links, sorry. So, for example, we've created a link from LFS bin to user bin. Within the MNT directory, this is. And finally, if we're on 64-bit, this lib64 directory is going to be created. That's again one command. You can see it says created directory. It's quite safe to run that on a 32-bit system. All that happen is that it won't do anything. So it's up to you if you're not sure, run it and it won't matter. If you're sure, don't run it and again it won't matter. It's best if you're unsure, if you best to run it as a save because the, the program will work out if it's the correct system or not to create that directory. Programs in Chapter 6 will be compiled with a cross compiler. And it says for, in order to, this separate, to separate this cross compiler from other programs, we need a special directory. So it's called this tools directory that's going to be created now. So that's created. And the next thing we're going to do is to create a LFS user. So this becomes part of the base system. So if you're on a a real Linux system that you're using, just be aware that you're creating or adding a an LF system to your own system. So first of all, we'll add a group for this LFS user, and then we'll actually add the user using this command here. And as with nearly all commands here, there's an explanation of what the switch is doing, options and so on. So that's been added. Next thing we do is password LFS to change the password of the LFS user. Now, if you didn't do the changes that I did to that security QC uh, file, or was it password? Password QC file, then you will have to put a proper password in here. Because I've made changes, I can use a nice simple password again and not be challenged about the fact that the password's no good and it will refuse to change it. So that's something to bear in mind if you can't get that to change to something simple. Now we're going to give this new LFS user access to all the directories that we've just created. So that's ownership to those directories and also to the lib64 directory that we created if we're on a lib64 system, which we are. And that's why it's run that command. Again, if you're on a 32-bit, you run that command. It won't do anything. It doesn't matter. I would advise run it anyway, just to be sure that the right thing happens. Note, in some host systems, the following command does not complete properly and suspends the login to the LFS user in the background. Yes, I have seen this before. Uh, it does occasionally happen. Don't worry. Just press F, uh, type in FG and press Enter. Um, you'll get the... Uh, everything working properly. Now we're going to become the LFS user by running this super user command or switch user command. And you can see we've now got green prompts because we're not the root anymore. We're now an ordinary user. And we need to now set the environment up for this user. So the next part, 4.4. And uh, the first thing we do is create a bash profile for it. And then we set some defaults for the user by doing that. 
and again there's an explanation of what all these functions are they're all necessary for the building i'm not going to go through these individually because this is something you can read in your own time if i start reading this which is just a bit pointless why do you want to read watch a video or listen to somebody reading it and you know it could be read yourself Several commercial distributions add non-documented instantiation of etc bash dot bash rc to the initialization of bash. This file has the potential to modify the LFS user's environment in ways that can affect the building of critical LFS packages. <clears throat> so to make sure the LFS user environment is clean, check for the presence of this file and if present, move it out of the way. So as the root user, so let's do control D to become the root again. And we'll run this. I don't think there's anything happens here on Gen 2, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen on Endeavor OS. But as I say, if you're using something different, run it in case it does do something. And it hasn't. We would have seen something because the verbose options been set on this move command. So yes, nothing was happened. Uh, so let's become the root user. Uh, sorry, the LFAs user again. And finally, to have the environment fully prepared for building temporary tools, source the just created user profile, and you'll see some changes made. We do set. Okay, that's Gen 2 that's done that. Let's do something like echo dollar LFS should still exist. It does. And we should be able to see some of the other environment variables that have been set, for example, LFS target, so let's echo that. And there you go. So that shows that the uh, environment has been configured correctly for the LFS user. So the next page is all about SBUs and what these are, are standard build units. And what it is, is the first package, which is bin utils normally. What we do is to time that, and the amount of time that takes is the time for one standard build unit. And that means that when we look at other packages, they'll have a standard build unit against them. So for example, um, it's got the example there, glibc, if that took two standard build units, then that's twice as long as bin utils would take. So if bin utils took five minutes, glibc is two standard build units, five times two, that's 10 minutes. Be warned though that as it says here, they're not very accurate. They're only a guide. There's loads of things that can affect uh, the uh, timing of packages. There's the number of cores. There's the number of cores utilized. There's whether you're on a, uh, a mechanical disk or electronic disk, um, the amount of memory, whether swaps being used and so on. So there's loads of variables. So it really is just a guide. Uh, take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt. It's good for knowing whether the package is going to complete within a minute or so or whether it's going to be taking hours to install. That's what, that's where I find it's really useful. It's not good for knowing whether it's going to take 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Um, it's, you know, it's bigger orders of magnitude is where it's re really useful to know. There's a note here about parallel compiling. So we can change this. Uh, we can actually add it into the uh lfs users um profile so it's the bash rc one i think is it i can't remember which yes this one here so i'm editing dot bash rc for the lfs user this machine has got uh four cores so i'll just copy and paste that obviously if your machine's got more cores or fewer cores then just adjust the, the number after that, J. If it's got two, you put two in there. If it's got 10 cores, put a 10 in there. And then save that. And then that means when we run make, make will look for this environment variable and utilize it, or we can explicitly specify to run make with minus J4, which in some packages will only run on one core anyway. They either fail or build incorrectly. So we have to specify make minus J1 to override the make flags option that's been sent, uh, that's been set, sorry. So we now need to source 
resource the bash profile because if I do echo dollar make flags you'll see it's empty so we need to resource the bash profile to pick that change up if I now do echo make flags you can see minus j4 exists test suites as I lightly mentioned before um, we will be running them only really worth running in chapter 8 when we're building the proper system it's not really any point or well, there's no real point running them earlier um, and the reason why I recommend running them is because you can't guarantee that you've got a good system or a reliable system unless you've run the tests to say that things have passed or where those that have failed that it's an expected failure or we know there's a reason for that failure and where there is a reason for a failure the Linux from scratch book is really good it, it specifies where there are expected failures and we'll see see those uh, exceptions as we go through 